And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I yeah. am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, making his grand return after about two years, the head of Tab Creations, the ma the man current the man responsible for bring for bringing us things such such as Shadows Over Soul, Against the Dark Yogi, Dime Adventures, and returning to Age of Ambition now with the Heights of ex the Heights of Power expansions. The one and only Thorin Tabor. How you doing today, man? Thank you. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been. It certainly has. Oh, there. There had been a few things here, here and there that I that um I was keep that I kept an eye on. It's just I tr I'm very hesitant about ca about tackling ad tackling adventures. It's one unless it's one of those mega campaigns like say Crown of the Oathbreaker where there's just so much content that I don't have to run the risk of spoilers. That's fair. Because ser seriously, Crown of the Oathbreaker is like 900 pages. That's uh wow. Okay. Yes, <laughs> we were out there. Yeah. But and of course and when it came when it came to G Ganjita, that that was just a case of ships passing in the night. But um, but I'm glad to, I'm glad to have you back on. We've the last time I one of the earlier times that I did have you on, we did talk a bit about Age of Ambition. In fact, it was during its primary Kickstarter. And I suppose the I, I suppose the main thing main thing to go into is that. As I as I understand it, even though Heights of Power is in the is in the title, there are three books that are being kickstarted with this project. That's right. So uh, there's uh, oh. Uh, oh go go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, yeah, no problem. Didn't mean to, didn't mean to cut you off there. Yeah, there's uh, there's Heights of Power, uh, the Game Master's Toolkit, and Melanoc Adventures all being kickstarted like as a Bundle of three. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess we'll start with Heights of Power. Which would it be fair to would it be fair to say that's that's meant to be the um, the advanced player's handbook of Age of Ambition? Yeah, it's like the ad, ad, advanced player's handbook or epic level handbook sort of uh, of Age of Ambition. It's mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of new character options, mostly for you know high tier, high power characters. You know, ones with some experience under their belts. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing, I'm guessing that in the spirit of that, there's going to be a bit of advice on how so, how to um, build characters from from the get go at that tier, if so, oh, if people want to. Yeah, we've got rules for you know starting with more advanced characters, uh, and how to integrate that with the uh, life path system that Age of Ambition uses. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, of course the. It also it also mentions um cap it also mentions capstone traits. I think that's a good spot to go into right out of the gate. Sure. So capstone traits are basically powerful new abilities for people that you know have uh, uh, mastered their field. So if you're uh, somebody who's you know like really into you know like the sketchy sneaking around you know like thieves sort of stuff, you know some powerful new traits for that. Or if you're um. Uh, Somebody who's an inventor, there's, uh, you know, some powerful new traits where you can, like, you know, kind of retroactively whip out an invention, you know, like you've been you know, been working on all along, obviously, and, uh, you know, and apply that there. Or if you're, like, a mage, there's, uh, you know, some, some new, uh, there's uh, ways to use spells there and um, uh, mm -hmm. uh, other, other various things like that. And there, there's, there's a big list that, that match all the different, uh, you know, careers and archetypes found in... Uh, both the Age of Ambition core and some of the uh, the supplements that have come out since. Yeah. Now the other th the other thing I was in I was interested in is arcane fighting styles. Since for one, you you already know how much of a fan I am of um of actually give actually giving fighting styles some weight some weight in RPGs instead of just I hit him with my sword shit. <laughs> mm -hmm. But 
to um this idea of of mixing ma mixing magic and martial through the fighting style system i'm curious how you how that's going to work yeah so um uh, so basically um a little, a little bit of history here so age of ambition you know in, in the core you've, you've got a variety of uh uh arcane lores and so when you learn when you learn an arcane score a uh, lore you know you you pay some experience to get the lore itself and then you need access to the, the various spells that are in that lore and uh similarly uh at least kind of similarly in uh fighting styles in the system um, uh, you know you pay some experience to learn the fighting style and you get access to a number of different um uh, maneuvers that are uh in the fighting style and there, there's there's some differences between how spells and fighting styles work but they they're, they're kind of parallel in that sense so what these are is these are fighting styles that take a magical re reagent uh just like you were using using magic but you know you do kind of you know fancy martial moves that involve you know like imbuing magic into you know whatever it is the maneuver that you're doing mm -hmm. uh, and the idea for these a lot of the times came you know i'm uh somebody talked about you know like doing the sort of like you know like you know light your sword on fire and you know like uh i don't know slash into people or you know use your manipulation of air to you know like bounce off a gust of wind to do some like you know like real wushu sort of mm. sort of you know maneuver sort of things and i was sitting here thinking like you know how would i model this in age of ambition and it, it i kind of sort of do it with you know like by buying the individual like arcane lures and individual fighting styles but not not really you kind of kind of hit a hand wave a bit and i i wasn't satisfied with that and so yeah. that because that's really where these arcane fighting styles came from yeah, um, i think the closest to that was the warcaster style in the main book uh, yeah. exactly yeah um but these these uh these paired all the different um uh, arcane lores essentially and they give you a variety of maneuvers to uh kind of take that 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 magical theme and then uh, mix it into your fighting so it is it a is it a case where would you be developing these as as a as a fighting style or as an arcane lore? Uh, so uh, these are these are fighting styles. They, they they work mechanically like fighting styles, but they they have as a prerequisite uh, the ability you know a, a particular arcane lore. Mm -hmm. So you know you learn some, for example, you can learn some um uh, uh you know like lore of water, you know water and ice sort of stuff and if you know that then you can then take this arcane fighting style and you can you know like uh do this sort of thing where you like you, you lay down the trail of ice and like slide over it to like avoid um uh you know various you know free attacks or whatever or you know mm -hmm. get past uh you know the sort of barriers like that and then attack somebody from behind or they have a hard time parrying it or whatever um uh, mm -hmm. so you know, just cool tricks, you know, cool fighting style tricks you can do by uh, applying some magic. Yeah. And I'm guessing, is I know that with each, with each of the fighting styles, there are compatible weapons. Or in some, yeah. in some cases, <laughs> I was going to say in some cases, no weapon, but even the brawler style has, has some weapons that it can use. So... Is it going to be a similar thing with the arcane fighting styles that they do have compatible weapons, or is or is the um, prerequisite built on arcane lore? Um, the prerequisite is built on arcane lore. Um, they they still list compatible weapons, but I, I believe all of the arcane fighting styles say compatible weapons any. Mm -hmm. Which def definitely makes sense. Uh, I know I know one of the obvious ones would be some would be a swordsman setting their sword on fire, but. I I would I would say a less obvious potential potential one is some is something not far removed from the concept of an adept in Shadowrun, you know, using the magic to enhance the body. Yeah. Um, we 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 have a we have a a, a similar style. That I think it, it, it's uh, based off the I believe the lore of enhancement that does that in the, the Heights of Power book. Yeah. So. And and I'm guess I'm guessing that's focused just on the arcane lores, not the lunar lores. Um, we we actually have uh, arcane fighting styles based off both. Okay, okay. Uh, 
Yeah. If I were, if I were to throw one of the um, lores at you, could you could you tell me a um, arcane style that uses that as a prerequisite? Sure. All right. Let's go with illusion. All right. So there is the uh, illusionist style. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there's uh, four maneuvers. Um, that is part of it. Um, there is a a uh, sort of like. Blur, you know, sort of like blurring effect where you know you you make it hard to um uh, pinpoint exactly where you are in order to dodge your attack. Um, there is a uh, illusionist trick, uh, which is basically you know, you're making an attack against their willpower, um, uh, uh, where you can uh, you, you can you can basically you know like stun them or daze them um uh, in order to you know create an opening later. Um, I, I believe there's like a sensory burst sort of uh, attack where you just kind of like dazzle them a sharp burst of sensory output um uh, um I, I think what's the other one i think it's like a momentary invisibility sort of thing where you like bend the light around yourself and uh temporarily you know gain the hidden the hidden consequence sort of to you like do a sneak attack sort of thing i i, mm. I have to re i have to look at the last one i think that's the case but yeah. um the lo the lore of earth okay the lore of earth i i know there is a uh, you you know you can sort of like pull you know pull the stone around you to create like like a makeshift armor sort of thing uh, give yourself uh, resistance to the damage there um i believe there is the uh um so lore of earth already has a spell where you fling you know like fling stones at people mm -hmm. but there's a, there's a maneuver that lets you you know essentially like fling stones uh, at people like f freely as long as you have the the arcane fighting style active so you don't have to like recast the spell every time mm -hmm. i believe there's also a uh, you, you, you pull up the earth and you can like trip people to provide you know cover um uh, to intercept attacks mm -hmm. um that's yeah, I can I, I can get that. Um divination. Uh divination has uh there is a uh a sort of like precognitive defense or whatever sort of um uh thing that lets you improve your defense by, you know, like predicting where your foe is going to attack next. Mm -hmm. Um there's a uh uh predictive strike ability where is it's uh it's basically like if you attack and miss, um, then you can, uh, as a uh, as a reaction, make an immediate secondary attack. You know, like where you uh, you predicted where they were going to dodge to, and can kind of follow up in that what, you know, in that direction or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, there's a uh, there's the the auger foe. Um, so it's like you read the strands of fate, and uh, you're able to. Uh, 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 learn some of the, the foes, you know, like uh, weaknesses or abilities. Um, uh, and you can also like l use that to know where they are should they, uh, they, you know, have the hidden consequence or something else like that going on. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a fourth one. I, I'm blanking on the fourth mover and yep. divination style. Mm -hmm. uh, I get the feeling a good chunk of the elemental lores somebody could use to pull to. Kind of pull pull off something in the in the vein of the benders that you see in um, Avatar. Oh, absolutely! That was uh, honestly a lot of uh, when I was try when I was brainstorming ideas for different you know maneuvers and kind of whittling it down to which ones I wanted. That was uh, a key source of inspiration. Mm -hmm. Which I could I could I could certainly see. Uh oh. I am curious what the what the closest equivalent would be if somebody wanted to use wanted to use electricity. Yeah. Um, so you think about that. So I um, there there is no you know like real electricity lore. So there is there's not really an equivalent there. You can, you could probably pull off something by you know just taking the the fire style or you know lore of fire and kind of theming it a little more that way but we do we, we don't straight up have like an electricity lore um yeah. yeah i will i will admit part of the reason i ended up thinking of bending is and this 
at least in the ori- at least in the original TV show, not, not so much in Legend of Korra, but that's another that's another story. <laughs> um, yeah. Each of the ben- each of the bending styles in that series was rooted in a pr- was rooted in a particular uh, martial arts style. You know, mm-hmm. air bending is rooted in Bagua Zhong. Um, earth bending is rooted in, in Hungar or su- or Southern Praying Mantis. Fire bending is rooted in um, sh- in Northern Shaolin, and uh, water bending is rooted in Tai Chi. So, give, given that given this mix of mar- of martial and magic that you're going with, that's what immediately came to mind. And I'm I'm pretty sure for I'm pretty sure for other people in the design team that it didn't take long for people to um, put two and two together. Yeah. But moving fr- moving from that, you also have you also have Archmagery, which I'm guessing is meant to be kind of the advanced version of lo- of the existing lores, or is it or is it more freestyling magic? It's it's more of a freestyling magic. It's uh you know you've reached a point in your magical studies where you you no longer need to stick to the stick to these strict spells and can you know kind of craft uh different different effects. Mm-hmm. So, so is, how how would it how would it work compared to somebody just using one of the um lores? Um uh I mean you you it's it is uh so so the lores provide you know very specific specific sets of spells. Um and there, there's some flexibility in the descriptions, but they all they always do one specific thing. So in this case what you do is you can you uh, either the player who's trying to craft the craft of this, you know, dynamic spell, more or less, you know, kind of describes what they're trying to do. And then there's a different uh, ways for the GM to, you know, kind of like quantify that and that will set a difficulty, uh, you know, a target number to try and pull it off. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, they can specify, you know, things like what sort of consequence they're trying to impose, or like whether they're trying to affect an area or like a specific target, or um, uh, whether they, you know, how how long they're taking to cast a spell. Often these things are a lot more flexible and and can be a lot more powerful, but they take often they take more time than the like the instantaneous action that most of these uh, spells and the lures are. So in in that regard, they'd be more akin to long form rituals rather than fire and forget spells. That's right. Um, it's uh, it, if you, if you, it's uh, a bit more like uh, oh, if you've if you if you've used magic in like Ars Magica, uh, it's it's not quite it's not quite as complex as Ars Magica, but it's something you know, stepping in that vein, you know, or uh, the old uh, uh, Dragonlance Fifth Age, I guess, was a little more liberal of making things take individual, you know, sort of like one around actions, but otherwise, you know, there's a similar sort of thing. You can describe the stuff and you kind of add them up, and that sets the the target number. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I can I can certainly get that. And with that with that in with that in mind, um, with heights of power, I'm guessing you sh- are you shooting for around a hundred pages. Um, uh, just just a little bit less than that. And I f- I'd have, I'd have been surprised if it was if it was more than that, given th- the um, approach, and even mm-hmm. even though. Even though you have it that Archmagery is a bit freestyle, are you planning on putting in, in a few exa- example Archmagery effects and how the formula works for them? Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, we've got... Uh, uh, so it the Archmagery system divides uh, spells up into uh, five tiers of power, basically, and we've got a brief example of... Uh, Different archmagery, you know, stuff already kind of pre-configured out for every arcane lore. Um, just to, can can I give you an example of what is possible at each of these five tiers of power for each of the lores? Just as it gives you know, gives the uh, a player something that will read through. It's like, oh, I could do this or I could do this, and it also gives uh, GMs like a benchmark when they're trying to you know judge how to quantify these things, so they can like look down the list of, for example, if they're trying to do some sort of um uh oh i don't know lore of illusion for example they can look at these five examples one for each tier and uh kind of say oh is it closer to this or is it closer to this okay so i think this is what the difficulty should be mm-hmm. i can 
I can certainly I can certainly vibe with that. Uh, cuz when you when you have essentially a blank check with with these kind of with these kind of systems it's important to at least give some degree of guidance so you're not just throwing people in the deep end and telling them um swim. Yeah, mix it up and give it a number. <laughs> um uh <laughs> Well, well, that I like to call that kind of thing blank check design. It's part of the reason why I, why I did why I never was able to jump on the fate bandwagon because it yeah it does I, I I think it's the sort of design that works with a very particular groups, but there's a lot of groups that just does not work for because they're going to abuse it mercilessly. Abuse is <laughs> one thing, but providing guidance is another. In fact, you can curtail yeah. some abuse by by giving guidance in terms of what you can and can't do with some with say to use the fate example aspects. Mm -hmm. That was that was always my pet peeve that it that um the con things like high concept and trouble the a lot a lot of the fate books didn't do a good job of giving examples as to what that entails. Some did like yeah. Tiancha. Tiancha is actually good at that. I've not played that particular one. I've co I've covered it. A f I've covered it a few times. It is it has a interesting um, element and animal martial arts system. I'm still not That's a cool. fan of how stunts work in in Fate. I tend to, and and how that how too many stunts in um, cuts into refresh. Um, mm -hmm. But that's an, that's a whole other can of worms. But. Then there's the Game Master's Toolkit, which is it is it is interesting to have a G, to have a GM's toolkit th um, this far this far removed from <laughs> from the co from the core from the core book that that usually that doesn't ha that doesn't happen as often as one as people think. Um, yeah. So um, is is a lot of the GM's toolkit, a lot of um, GM facing material that that wasn't able to be f fit into the core book, or how did a lot of it come about? Yeah, so a lot of this came about from uh, you know, so Age of Ambition came out three three years ago. Yeah, we kickstarted in twenty twenty, mm -hmm. and uh, we you know we've uh, I've ran quite a number of campaigns of it since, and I've got a lot of feedback from other you know other player groups out there, and. Uh, so that rather than being this material that just didn't fit in, a lot of it is, you know, uh, material that was developed specifically, you know, as a result of uh, three years of player feedback and experience with the system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there's uh, a variety of, uh, you know, as I'm running a campaign, or, you know, I, I come up some hazard and I realize, you know, there's not like a good equivalent in the core book. Like, oh, this is something that, you know, it, it would be good to have, you know, like this statted up or this you know, this is ready to go. So there's a variety of new hazards that GMs can drop into their games. Um, there's also just a, 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 a quite a, a good number of alternative rules. Um, there are like, different ways of doing things that can, you know, like, uh, help emphasize you know, different uh, uh, themes or uh, which just make, you know, streamline things a bit. Um, uh, and just based on just years of playing the game and feedback. Um, and so that's where, that's where a lot of this material came through. Um, there's also a uh, yeah, carefully chosen selection of sort of like deep lore for the setting in the back that mm -hmm. players you know, tease or build games around. Oh yeah, I can de I can definitely get behind that. Now, of co when it comes to rules for generating encounters, um, obviously there's pl there's gonna be there's gonna be the do's and don'ts on that front. But I'm curious if you have some have some sort of toolkit for generating options um, quickly or on the fly. Uh, yes, we do. There's a there's an, a, a sort of like quick encounter generation system, which is you know great if you've got some sort of a writer's block or you need to whip something up very, you know, very quickly. Just and what ninjas. it's yeah, <laughs> just you know, two ninjas jump in or you know, two men with you know uh, crossbows kick down the door or whatever. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's basically, it's, uh, it's a series of tape, it's, uh, a, a series of tables, um, that you kind of like go through, um, that, and it gives you some, some basic ideas that then afterwards you can 
you know, kind of, kind of see. Basically, you know, the, the idea is to provide you with some inspiration, and you can, you know, go from there. So, uh, for example, um, it might be, uh, you know, like what's encountered. You know, so you you flip. Um, uh, what's going to be, you know, uh, you know, a traveling peddler, or you know, like uh, you come across an unexpected settlement, or um, uh, you know, religious pilgrims, or uh, you know, a dilapidated roadside inn, or something like that. And there's a couple different couple different tables for that depending on what you're going for um you know what's uh in, what's an interesting tactical feature nearby um uh, what's the what's the initial attitude of the, the people there uh there uh, what what's you know what's the motive are they uh are, are they vengeful do they have you know like some sort of uh secret they're trying to you know they're trying to cover up are they you know m malevolent um uh in some way um uh that sort of thing and then after it's uh oh i I feel like half a dozen -ish sort of tables, you know, you you look through it and you put it all together and hopefully you'll have something to go on, or if not, you can only fill up in a couple tables till you get something that inspires you. Mm-hmm. And I'd like to say I came up with the whole just add ninjas thing, but that's Robin Laws' idea. <laughs> that sounds very feng shui. Yeah, he it was it was something he put in. You got got a roadblock in the story, just add ninjas. <laughs> Which is is stupid, but as the as one of the rules of combat dictates, if it's stupid but it works, it's not stupid. Yeah, really. It reminds me of some of the old, you know, like pulp pulp stories. Uh, I forget who said it. Like you know, like if 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 the action's slowing down, you know, two men with guns, uh, you know, like bust down the door and start shooting, and then you can figure out why after you know if it's resolved. Mm-hmm. Uh. I, I know that I know that I've used the the case of the uh, the the surprise explosion. You know, t taking taking the whole thing of the bomb the bomb under the table that Hitchcock talked about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's just some. It's just sometimes it's some sometimes it's literal. Um, I, I remember when I first saw Speed for the first time. I thought, you know what, that that's a that's a really good way to make to. To make a make mundane sets of rules um, tense by saying, "Okay, okay, everybody's got everybody has a bomb. Everybody has a bomb strapped to their chest, and whoever whoever rolls a natural one first explodes." <laughs> Good. Oh man, I want to do that in a parallel game or something, man. <laughs> you know that's so that's sort of that's sort that's sort of messed up humor. Oh. Now it you did mention it is mentioned on the Kickstarter about alternative rules, and I'm I'm guessing the I'm guessing these are not necessarily something that would be all all that intensive, just just little shifts to the to the left or the right. Uh, yeah, for the most part, they're uh, they're just shifts to the one left. Mm -hmm. You know, to make things run a little smoother, little tweaks to uh, how to resolve things. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also a, uh, I say, um, uh, you know, uh, so some of them are like, some of them are definitely like tweaks to the rules, like they're hard rules. Some are a bit more like, a bit more like gymming guidelines, you know, like here's how you can run this to make this, you know, go more smoothly. Um, uh, you know, here's how you can make the, you know, your party's starting bonds matter in a campaign, you know, like, or if you've got like a planned sort of like scenario, you know, uh, and you're making characters for it, you know, you know, he, here are some suggestions for you know, just provide a list of bonds they can pick from like a menu to start with, and just the way they're picking characters that are you know, you've got plans for and that are uh, relevant, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's also a number you can like if if you're if you want to make combat more gritty, here's a couple of tweaks you can apply. If you want to make it less gritty and more, you know, like Cinematic and epic. Here's a couple of tweaks you can apply. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm always in. F I'm always in favor of going more swashbuckly. So if somebody wanted to make things more cinematic when it comes to the alternate rules, um, what would that? What would that necessarily change? Um. So uh, to to make things more cinematic, um. Uh, 
just to try and remember some of the things here. Um, uh, so uh, one of the things you do to make it more cinematic and just make tracking things easier is just uh, make grave wounds drop enemies. So rather than dealing a grave wound to an enemy and then trying to track whatever what effects it has, just like you know they might not be dead, but they're they're out of the battle because they're you know they're, they're nursing their uh, whatever the grave wound is. You know, um, uh, I guess broken leg if you want to be more gritty or um, uh, I don't know lost dignity and you know like concussion if you want to be less um uh or um uh you know there's uh there's like a non-lethal methods option in there where you know uh there there, there is a uh a sort of like cinematic i don't know cliche trope whatever you want to call it where you know you, you bonk them over the back of the head and they you know they, they go unconscious you press the magic you know like off button mm -hmm. um and uh you know there's a there, there's you know there's a, a it, an alternative rule where you know you can do that as a sort of like uh yes knock them out and then move on um uh uh sort of thing if you don't want to you know actually damage people when they go down for whatever character reason or plot reason or whatever um uh you know if you if you want to make things less gritty for the the, the player characters um uh, rather than like grave wounds doing some sort of like bad lingering in injury you could uh instead have them you know render that the character unconscious for um uh you know uh a, a few you know a, a few hours and um, there's a way to you know, determine that um uh which is a way to you know take them out of the fight but not like give them you know a uh a lingering injury they're gonna have to deal with for a extended period of time um i'm blanking on somebody other ones but there's a uh, I think there's a, there's like a stunt option too. So there's a number of you know like different maneuvers you can take in the combat system of the core. But if you want to have a more like freeform stunt thing, there's like a, a simple rule you can drop in. It's basically like they describe it. They make the attack with a, with a bane, and if they hit, it does some you know extra special thing that you know the gym kind of like wheels in the fly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can. That, I can get behind yeah. that. Um. And I am curious. Now, when it comes to the se the secrets of Tr of Tristrel, I'm guessing oh, I'm guessing a good chunk of that is going to be um, story seeds or little paragraph descriptions of certain NP NPCs who are the movers and shakers of various areas. Yeah, a lot. That's it's it's, it's a lot. A large amount of that is basically different little story seeds or plot hooks that you know you can pick up and begin. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting thing, and then maybe, maybe you can you know spin a whole session of that or, or or at least a little plot line or something yeah uh, yeah now the third book that you're do that you're doing um melanoc adventures which is a collection of um one of one shots uh, how how many pages would you say how short are we talking when it comes to one shots because some some games have one shots that you can do in one page and some have one shots that are obviously more than that would you say that each is a few pages long. Yeah, I'd say they're each is in the four to eight pages. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and it's basically, you know, they're 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 aimed at um uh, something the GM can quickly digest and run for, you know, one evening, uh, three or four session, you know, hour session of play. Yeah, the tabletop equivalent to a TV episode. Pretty much, yeah. And the, there's a. Uh, we try to do a good variety of different like types of scenarios there. So there's a there's a heist. There's you know there's a heist one shot. Uh, it's sort of like spy games one. Uh, there's one where you you delve into a mine where the workers are going missing, but like with a, with a twist at the end that I don't want to spoil. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, there's like a crime syndicate shell game involving bodies. Um, uh, and then there's like a night of the circus gone wrong and uh, a few others. Yeah, I, in a in a bit of um. A bit of word association, one one might say. I'd like to go through the names of each of the um, scenarios that you have and just kind of get a feel for the tone that that module is trying to go for. Sure thing. Um, starting with digging deeper. All right. So uh, digging deeper is it's uh, it is you know you, you go in thinking this is going to be hey you know we're, we're going to go in this mine or we're going to clear out the monster it's going to be you know like a uh, you know, a straightforward dungeon crawl, and then uh, the deeper you go, you know, metaphorically, uh, 
it's not what it seems on the surface. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the clockwork plot. Yeah. So this is, uh, you know, uh, really, you know, this is one, of, one of the big, you know, themes in the setting is, you know, like, uh, uh, there, you know, this is a fantasy world, but it's, it, you know, it's advancing beyond the sort of like medieval fantasy and, uh, you know, sort of like, uh, oh, early modern tech and stuff. And so this is, you know, this is mixing, you know, technology and magic here. And um, uh, this is uh, a, a plot that's, uh, that, they, you know, the, the, the heroes need to foil to, um, uh, uh, you know, do some criminal stuff. Yeah. Uh, the Dreaming Day Heist. Yeah, so this is a... Uh, this is a heist scenario. Uh, Dreaming Day is a, uh, is a a religious holiday with one of the the major religions there in the in the game world, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, they're going to uh, you know uh, steal this holy relic, and uh, you can uh, 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 thwart this heist. Mm -hmm. A night at the circus. All right. So uh, this is this is uh, one of the uh, like, like lighter spirited ones, but um, uh, this is you know. Uh, you know the parties. You know, the the parties basically there to you know attend the circus, or at least they're passing through a, you know a settlement with the circus, and um, uh, oh, oh, chaos breaks out, and they've got to you know uh, help. They've got to do, save people and figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. Which I would I was like that setup of pe of people just having people being good people with really 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 bad luck, <laughs> or real or simultaneously really good really good luck case in case in point Caiaphas Kane yeah who, who is simultaneously the luckiest and unluckiest man in the 40k <laughs> universe mm -hmm. oh but... the <laughs> well. he is the hero of the Imperium that's right uh, next it would be body problems all right so this is a uh... I guess this this is good. This has got kind of like a dark humor vibe going on it. But this is the uh, the one I mentioned with the uh, the criminal syndicate and the shell game with the bodies. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, and you've got to get it, even track down the uh, oh, you know, the widget or whatever there. Yeah. Um, uh, and... mm -hmm. I can I can get that. Uh oh. The Chemist's Gambit. All right. So uh, the Chemist's Gambit is um, uh, th this is like the, the spy games uh, uh, thing I mentioned there. Mm. But uh, there's this is, they got a sort of like spy versus spy vibe going on where the uh, the there's you know you get the initial hook and then you're, you realize there's uh, what you may think is like one you know group working behind the scenes is actually two opposing groups and you've got to kind of sort out the matters and also stop uh you know stop uh, uh bad attack along the way and last of these is the honey trap yeah so this is uh this is more of a this is more of an intrigue scenario here um uh with uh you know you, you this is kind of this is an intrigue scenario where uh the I guess the party's encouraged to uh, kind of like take on a uh, like a false persona to try to uh, to, to root out what's what's going on here. Mm. Um, uh... Yeah, I can I can get I can get behind that, and I'm guessing with each module, there's going there, is there going to be um, hints on how on how wood could utilize the module from different um, origin points. Like different ba different party backgrounds and whatnot. Uh, yeah. So at the beginning of, at the beginning of each of these, there's a, a, a brief description of how you can get the player characters involved and uh, what the you know suggested uh, uh, I guess expertise is uh, going in, or if you or if you lack it, how you can try to make up for that. Mm -hmm. in the yeah, I can I can get behind that, and. Um... Is it going to be the case where at the at the end of each module, a few suggestions on how to how to carry it forward? Um, most of them have have a few suggestions. A couple of them wrap up a little a little neatly. Um, and then there is uh at the very beginning there is uh like uh, at the very beginning of the book there's like a brief description, and then uh 
a kind of sort of like quick suggestion of how you might try to link them if you wanted to. And it's it's admittedly a very kind of like it's not a very in depth. You know these these weren't these weren't written as like a, a linked campaign in mind. But if if you wanted to do something more than just like an episode of the week, you know, here's how you might try to do so. You know. Mm -hmm. Which definitely makes sense. And now, with, now in total, how how large do you see Melanoc Adventures being? Um, uh, it's a bit to the shorter side. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'd say it's uh, in, in the vein of about forty-eight pages. All right, that that makes sense. Now, with that with that in mind, when it comes. This is some, this is something that's been building on three years worth of experiences with Age of Ambition. In the, in those three years, what would you say have been some of the big learning experiences or th or things that you may not have you may not have planned on, but en ended up working out? You know those kind of things. Um. Can you give, can you give me an example? I'm not sure that it's... followed so. Oh, it's it's more about it's more about the things that the things that you learn through fe through feedback or things that players pointed out that you may not have pl you may not have planned on but ended up ended up um, working out. I know that's not exactly an example, but there's a lot of moving parts to this get to this kind of question. It's basically the big takeaways from the last three years. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, I've uh, you know heard back you know from a variety of people um uh like fighting styles have actually been uh very popular um uh in terms of so like basically with these fighting styles is most of these uh give a series of maneuvers and uh usually one of those maneuvers generates the bolstered consequence and then the rest the rest consume it in order for some like, special benefit right and that's that's actually been very popular because uh it's it breaks up and just doing the, you know, I hit it with my sword, the same thing every round, every round, you know, you do, you do the set maneuver and then you've got a variety, a variety of follow throughs, you know, some of which may be more widely applicable or situational, but, you know, you, you've got options there, you're doing different things round and round. Or if you know multiple fighting styles, you can kind of mix and match, mix and match that. But that's been very popular. Um, uh, the, 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 the magic system has been very, uh, some people really love it. Um, uh, I've I've heard a, you know a couple of people. I, I've I've heard a few I've heard a few complaints about the narrowness of uh, some of the, some of the spells or stuff. Um, that's been actually one of the things you know like we're addressing in um, uh, this heights of power with the uh, the archmagery and the the arcane fighting styles, adding more breadth to uh, the magical options there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the uh, there's a uh, one of the feedbacks we got is some groups really seem to click with with the bonds system, and some some just don't really understand what to do with it. And that's uh, one of the things where we're, we actually address in Game Master's toolkit with one of these streamlining options and uh, you know rules for trying to make bonds matter there um, uh, with uh, some of the you know the gaming suggestions and stuff like that. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, uh, a, a lot. Some some of the setting elements have really really vibed with people. Um, uh, uh, in, in particular, the um, uh, uh, the the Blowocks, the uh, the invaders from the neighboring moon, seem uh, mm -hmm. seem really popular. And that's something uh, we don't exactly expand upon here, but which we're looking to in the future. Yeah, i i should have asked I should have asked that in hindsight if you ha if there's gonna if there are some new monster entries in the GM's kit. Um. There, there is there, there aren't any new monster inter injuries there, and in part because we actually did an uh, expanded uh, uh, bestiary supplement. Uh, Twenty twenty one. It's, it's maybe it may have been a couple, uh, a couple years ago at this point. But it's since it has its own um, uh, supplement, we uh, focused on both things. That that definitely makes sense. Now. I think this is, unless I'm mistaken, this is the first time that you've done this whole thing of kickstarting three books at once. Yes, it is. It's that, that is something of an experiment for us. And so. 
well, look, well, looking at the current state, the current state of things, it seems to be an experiment that's going well. And c congratulations yeah. on um, getting close to tw getting close to twice what your initial goal was at the time of this recording. Thank you. Uh, and with that, with that in mind, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? Not a date per se, but a general ballpark. Uh, for uh, so for the PDFs, these are basically ready to go, and so we're planning to send them out um, uh, very shortly after the Kickstarter closes. Mm -hmm. um, for the the print copies, um, well, we're, they're uh, we'll, Kickstarter always takes two in the ballpark of two to three weeks to, to send the funds and. Uh, it would be after that, but then we've also got the holidays coming up. So our our, our aim is to send them out as soon as possible. Um, but uh, the, the, to be fair, Chris, you know, the, the Christmas season always kind of throws shipping everything for a loop. So um, uh, uh, ballpark, you know, we're, we're we're aiming to uh we're aiming to get them sent out by uh, uh, by the time everything starts closing down for the Christmas week. But if things uh, slip a couple weeks because of Christmas and New Year's, then it's conceivable because uh, because the world is chaos at that time point of every year. Uh, well, welcome to printing and shipping, where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Pretty much. It's like I keep telling people, embrace the chaos, because it, it's going to embrace you back. But... I will certainly be looking forward to seeing how how it develops and seeing what sort of crazy combinations people come up with with the setup. Uh, and and uh, best of luck going through the hell of of printing. I know how much of a pain that is. Hell, we just we just replaced our printer at my, at my at where I work at where I work and gave the old printer the only fitting send off. And if you've seen Office Space, you know the send off. Nice. The only difference is somebody somebody brought a wood bat. I ended up using the thing and um, breaking the bat. Wow, well, sounds like a heavy duty printer then. <laughs> heavy duty printer or a very weak bat? <laughs> so I, just, I just kept hitting. The, I just kept hitting the thing until the bat broke. Lord only knows what would have happened if I had used an aluminum bat. Yeah. But <laughs> that, but that's oh, that's a whole other, that's a whole other thing. It's just I have seen firsthand way too many times the absolute hell that it, when it comes to getting things printed and getting things on the boat, uh, which results in things getting pushed back quite a bit. Uh, that happens sometimes. Um, things have gotten a little things have gotten a little bit better since the uh, I don't know. Since COVID shut the ports down, but uh, they're they're not not back running like they were yet. At least at least we're not dealing with somebody who don't doesn't know how to shear a a doesn't know how to steer a boat and thus le thus has it stuck in a canal for weeks on end. I'm I'm not letting that go. <laughs> Just, dear Lord, that was stupid. That was dumb. And then it almost happened again. Yeah, because. Murphy's Law. <laughs> what can go wrong will go wrong. Yeah. Uh, it's also the reason I've I always tell people you can't make something idiot proof, because the universe will just make a bigger idiot. <laughs> but that is... with that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to the temple once again and enjoy the madness that happens here. Thank you. It's been been good being being back. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then...
On behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody!